Yeah, and I think that's also, yeah. hopefully you'll touch on, yeah. there are some important subtleties between Perfect. MR and MS with Max. So yeah. Great. Okay. All right. So one year from now, we'll talk about novel atrial shunts, but for day, today, I'm going to give you an update on uh, TMVR with severe MAC. So let's see here. So I can't advance uh, the slides from up here. What did you say? I used the middle wheel will go from that. Yeah. I don't know. It was we, it was kind of strange the wheel worked, but maybe it's not. Yeah, so I can't advance them. Anyway, well, you can still talk about more Mac. Anybody else? Um, anybody Which, comments on Mac? Or, or, I, still struggle, I still struggle with um, interpretation of you know, there's increased flow velocity and therefore an increased gradient. And is that the same as an increased gradient, for instance, for rheumatic mitral stenosis? You know, like, you know how we argue about echo gradients post or Maybe they're not telling us what we need to, but I feel the same for MAC. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think the, the MAC and mitral stenosis is something that needs a little bit more careful attention. We're not so good about calculating mitral valve area with echo in the presence of significant MAC. I mean, all the formulas have been from rheumatic. Right. Um, and, um, you know, we've seen the phenomenon that in a lot of these patients that have mitral and aortic stenosis, you fix the aortic stenosis. Now you're improving the forward flow. The gradients, transmitral gradients increase, and they yeah. have persistent pulmonary yeah. hypertension and things like that. So it's kind of the mitral valve now really shows its colors and you need to pay attention. Hey, I think we're just more, and also my ability to have the procedure result in clinical improvement is less predictable, right? Um, yeah. And I just wonder if it's just more complex or if sometimes we're missing the diagnosis. And right? You're talking about in terms of the procedural success in, in successfully placing a valve functioning, or are you talking about in terms of gradient improvement? No, I'm talking about like, you know, you put a tire valve in and, you know, you know they're going to feel better. And you get somebody with MAC-related MS and you put a valve in and sometimes they're not any better and you wonder if you missed the diagnosis or if there was something wrong in your assessment, your echo assessment or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other... Oh, you got this oh, no, no, it's, it's still not working. You guys keep. Okay, so, so can you, are, are you advancing or am I advancing? Okay. Um, so should I just tell you to advance these slides? Would that be okay? All right, so can you go back one slide, please? All right, and back one more. Okay, and I'll go forward. Okay, so this is a patient uh, that many of you may have been aware because I showed this uh, last year. It's a 75-year-old woman, and you can see uh, she had quite uh, severe MR, and you can see uh, the amount of mitral calcification. It's actually probably the most severe MAC uh, that we've actually seen, and still more than we've seen since we did this first case. And go forward one slide. So the way we do this is you can see this is a tendine valve and we have uh, a lot of MAC here and we overlay a tendine valve and uh, here on the left hand side many of you are familiar with this concept of the Neo LVOT and with that the LVOT here is a 311 which you know generally anything over 250 is felt to be quite adequate. Okay next slide please. So this is how it's done, and you can see here that what we did is we did create a rail uh, because we weren't sure how uh, the valve would react to a balloon procedure. We were worried that there might be torrential MR, so we wanted to be prepared to go in with the valve right away. Uh, but the patient actually tolerated it quite well, and you can see here in the top left, that's a, a, it's a video, but unfortunately it's still, uh, and you can see the 3D view here, and on the bottom there is no MR. In the post-procedural CT, on the right-hand side, you can see uh, that the valve and follow-up actually fits very well within that severe MAC. And next slide, please. So with that in mind, that was the very first patient uh, in the world. And then uh, two years later, uh, we launched an early feasibility study. And this, uh, this was um, the first patient was treated this past December. And today, I'm going to give you an update as to where we are. And next slide, please. So these are the first six patients, and I'm going to describe more patients in a moment here, but these are the patients uh, who are first analyzed, and you can see here average age is about 79 years, um, half from uh, women. 
STS was over 9%, so a very high risk population, and you can see lots of morbidities as, as down below. Uh, interestingly, uh, the EF was preserved in most patients, and that's a little unusual because if you look at the 10-9 TMVR experience, most patients actually had abnormal EF, but here the EF was actually preserved. And then you can get, if you want, to look at the lower right-hand side, those are the dimensions from CT scan showing septolateral and intercomitial dimensions, as well as the volume of MAC, and here the volume was over 4,000 uh, for, uh, on average for these patients. Next slide, please. So here are the procedure outcomes, and in these first six patients, all of them successfully got a valve. Uh, about four of them uh, had a balloon procedure uh, before to help create the landing zone to put the valve in. And if you look at the rest, uh, the rest are zeros. And these are essentially all the major adverse events that were recorded. Uh, there were no deaths, no strokes, no ECMO, no bypass. Um, and in follow-up, uh, the patients have done well with no obstruction and no MR. Next slide, please. So in other words, we had 100% technical success with no conversion to surgery, no LVOT obstruction or re-intervention and there are no patients who died at 30 days. Next slide, please. So with that, uh, there have now been nine patients who have been treated as a, a first in human compassion use therapy, and you can see some examples of what the MAC looks like. On the left-hand side, if you remember that case that I showed you earlier was probably the most severe MAC we've ever seen, but here on the, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see there are all different types of MACs that have come our way and your question about who have we seen in practice, this is what we've typically seen. Uh, you can be circumferential, uh, you can be in the top right, you can see circumferential and incredibly invasive, and these perhaps are even more dangerous than the ones that are heavy because of the invasiveness of the MAC. And then you can see on the lower head, right hand side even eccentric uh, mitral and calcification. So in this experience, uh, there have been nine patients treated in compassionate use, uh, six in the US, one in France, two in Germany. Uh, STS was about 7, MAC volume, again about 4,000 tends to be what it is. Anything over 750 is what we consider the enrollment criteria. And in this study, note that no deaths at 30 days. We did have one late death, but there is no MR among any of the patients, and six of the patients have now made it to a year are, and are minimally symptomatic. So what this means now, is you click forward please, is that 15 patients now have been successfully treated uh, with this, uh, uh, this therapy. And it's been a very exciting uh, process. Uh, we have high hopes that when you have an anatomically shaped valve uh, that's dedicated for this uh, process, that uh, this will work. And if you go next slide, please. Click forward, please. I think that's it. So key points. Severe MAC, I think, is a really important boundary, but it's the most extreme pathology that's out there. And I think what we're finding is that uh, transcatheter MVR is now safe when you have a technology that's dedicated for this procedure. Thank you very much.